The Mystery Series, Ancient Writings from God's Holy Word. I am so excited because the Lord has told me to give you what He has given me since I've been in here in Shadaway now for over three years. The mysteries of His ancient word, the Holy Bible. You're going to learn with books like Jasher that is mentioned in Joshua, the book of the seer Nathan, the book of Enoch, and the Bible mentions this. Learn about Joseph's life, imprisonment, the details of his divine romantic engagement and marriage to his wife Aseneth, Enoch's actual translation and ascension to heaven and what happened to him after he got there. Hear also the astounding account of the 200 angels that fell, known as the Watchers, who married natural women on earth and had intercourse with the daughters of men. This is what released the Nephilim or giants on the earth. And the most thrilling thing of all is the ancient mysteries about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Learn mysteries on so many other men and women whose lives are recorded in the Bible. To register free, call 1-877-THE-GLORY. Welcome back to week 19 of phase two of the Ancient Writings Mentorship with Apostle David E. Taylor. Enoch delivers Jehovah's message of the future flood to Noah. This week, we will continue studying the fragment of Noah and learn about when he visited Enoch, his grandfather, and what they discuss concerning Jehovah's pronounced judgment through the flood. Their conversations were filled with divine knowledge Enoch received directly from Jehovah during visitations to heaven. We will also hear about Noah's personal visitation when Jehovah pronounced the blessings that would be released upon Noah and his offspring. Learn what happened when Noah sought Enoch's help concerning the future flood. Understand Jehovah's message to Noah confirming the judgment was coming because of unrighteousness and the evil things angels taught the men on earth. Hear Jehovah's promise to Enoch and his lineage to help preserve mankind on earth. Learn the anger of the Lord of Spirits because men were living like they were the Lord. Hear the angel Michael's conversation as heaven prepared for the flood. Listen now. Enoch, chapters 65 to 90. Chapter 65. And in those days, Noah saw the earth, that it had sunk down, and its destruction was nigh. And he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth and cried aloud to his grandfather Enoch. And Noah said three times with an embittered voice, Hear me, hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, Tell me what it is that is falling out on the earth, that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken, lest perchance I shall perish with it. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth, and a voice was heard from heaven, and I fell on my face. And Enoch my grandfather came, and stood by me, and said unto me, Why hast thou cried unto me? with a bitter cry and weeping. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth, that their ruin is accomplished because they have learnt all the secrets of the angels, and all the violence of the satans, and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth, and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth, and how soft metal originates in the earth. For lead and tin are not produced from the earth like the first. It is a fountain that produces them, and an angel stands therein, and that angel is preeminent. And after that, my grandfather Enoch took hold of me by my hand, and raised me up, and said unto me, Go, for I have asked the Lord of spirits as touching this commotion on the earth. And he said unto me, Because of their unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon, and shall not be withheld by me for ever. Because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learnt, the earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed. And these, they have no place of repentance for ever, because they have shown them what was hidden, and they are the damned. But as for thee, my son, the Lord of spirits knows that thou art pure and guiltless of this reproach concerning the secrets. 
and he has destined thy name to be among the holy, and will preserve thee amongst those who dwell on the earth, and has destined thy righteous seed both for kingship and for great honours, and from thy seed shall proceed a fountain of the righteous and holy without number for ever. Chapter 66 And after that he showed me the angels of punishment who are prepared to come and let loose all the powers of the waters which are beneath in the earth in order to bring judgment and destruction on all who abide and dwell on the earth. And the Lord of Spirits gave commandment to the angels who were going forth that they should not cause the waters to rise but should hold them in check, for those angels were over the powers of the waters. And I went away from the presence of Enoch. Chapter 67 And in those days the word of God came unto me, and he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me, a lot without blame, a lot of love and uprightness, and now the angels are making a wooden building, and when they have completed that task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it, and there shall come forth from it the seed of life, and a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant, and I will make fast thy seed before me for ever and ever, and I will spread abroad those who dwell with thee, it shall not be unfruitful on the face of the earth, but it shall be blessed and multiply on the earth in the name of the Lord. And he will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley which my grandfather Enoch had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin. And I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of the waters. And when all this took place, from that fiery molten metal and from the convulsion thereof in that place, there was produced a smell of sulphur. And it was connected with those waters and that valley of the angels who had led astray mankind burned beneath that land. And through its valleys, proceed streams of fire, where these angels are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. But those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body, but for the punishment of the spirit. Now their spirit is full of lust that they may be punished in their body. For they have denied the Lord of Spirits, and see their punishment daily, and yet believe not in his name. And in proportion, as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit for ever and ever. For before the Lord of Spirits, none shall utter an idle word. For the judgment shall come upon them, because they believe in the lust of their body and deny the Spirit of the Lord. And those same waters will undergo a change in those days. For when those angels are punished in these waters, these water springs shall change their temperature. And when the angels ascend, this water of the springs shall change and become cold. And I heard Michael answering and saying, this judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth, because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the lust of their body. Therefore, they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever. Chapter 68 and after that, my grandfather Enoch gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book in the parables which had been given to him. And he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables. 
and on that day, Michael answered Raphael and said, The power of the Spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets, the judgment of the angels. Who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away? And Michael answered again and said to Raphael, Who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it? and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out. And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits. Michael said thus to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord, for the Lord of Spirits has been angry with them because they do as if they were the Lord. Therefore, all that is hidden shall come upon them for ever and ever. For neither angel nor man shall have his portion in it, but alone they have received their judgment for ever and ever. Chapter 69 And after this judgment they shall terrify and make them to tremble, because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth. And behold, the names of those angels, and these are their names. The first of them is Samjaza, the second Artakifa, and the third Amen, the fourth Kokabel, the fifth Churael, the sixth Rumjal, the seventh Danjal, the eighth Nekael, the ninth Barakel, the tenth Azazel, the eleventh, Amaros, the twelfth, Batajal, the thirteenth, Busasajal, the fourteenth, Hananel, the fifteenth, Churel, and the sixteenth, Simapesiel, the seventeenth, Jetrel, the eighteenth, Tumael, the nineteenth, Churel, the twentieth, Rumael, the twenty-first, Azazel. And these are the chiefs of their angels and their names, and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. The name of the first, Jekon, that is the one who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. And the second was named Asbiel, he imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. And the third was named Gadriel. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death. And he led astray Eve and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men. And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and for evermore. And the fourth was named Penemue. He taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby Many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous. And death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them. But through this their knowledge, they are perishing, and through this power it is consuming me. And the fifth was named Kasdeja. This is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smitings of spirits and demons, and the smitings of the embryo in the womb, that it may pass away, and the smitings of the soul, the bites of the serpent, and the smitings which befall through the noontide heat, the son of the serpent, named Tabayet, and this is the task of Kazbael, 
the chief of the oath which he showed to the holy ones when he dwelt high above in glory. And its name is Beka. This angel requested Michael to show him the hidden name, that he might enunciate it in the oath, so that those might quake before that name and oath, who revealed all that was in secret to the children of men. And this is the power of this oath, for it is powerful and strong. And he placed this oath, Ake, in the hand of Michael. And these are the secrets of this oath. And they are strong through his oath. And the heaven was suspended before the world was created, and forever. And through it the earth was founded upon the water. And from the secret recesses of the mountains come beautiful waters, from the creation of the world and unto eternity. And through that oath the sea was created. And as its foundation, he set for it the sand against the time of its anger, and it dare not pass beyond it from the creation of the world unto eternity. And through that oath are the depths made fast, and abide and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity. And through that oath the sun and moon complete their course, and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity. And through that oath, the stars complete their course, and he calls them by their names, and they answer him from eternity to eternity. And in like manner, the spirits of the water and of the winds and of all zephyrs and their paths from all the quarters of the winds, and there are preserved the voices of the thunder and the light of the lightnings. And there are preserved the chambers of the hail, and the chambers of the hoarfrost, and the chambers of the mist, and the chambers of the rain and the dew. And all these believe and give thanks before the Lord of spirits, and glorify him with all their power. And their food is in every act of thanksgiving. They thank and glorify and extol the name of the Lord of spirits, for ever and ever. And this oath is mighty over them, and through it they are preserved, and their paths are preserved, and their course is not destroyed. Listen now to this week's testimonial that Apostle David E. Taylor has prepared for you. Hear about a man's trip to heaven and what he learned from former American slaves. Listen to him describe the rewards the former slaves received and how many slave owners professed Christianity but did not make it to heaven because of their wickedness on earth. Learn how slave owners appeared holy on Sundays but served the devil the other days. Hear a former slave expressing the joy he would feel if his earthly master was redeemed but because he did not repent, he knew it wouldn't happen. Listen now. At the close of the Great Convocation, my mother came to me and said, Son, have you noticed there is no race prejudice in heaven? No distinctions of the races. Yes mother, there are distinctions but no prejudice because of race. It makes no difference here as to the kind of skins or bodies we had on earth. All souls have a spotless whiteness like cloud and their robes as well. Whatever the physical differences we may have had on earth we are all one family here. Children of one father. Do you notice that group of singers yonder? Yes I do mother. They were all black people of America. Some of them suffered much as slaves by their old masters. Let us go and speak to them for a moment. And we went there to my great surprise I quickly recognized one of them. We stood face to face but for a moment I hesitated and I said, In the name of paradise is this Eurastus? Oh he said it's me but I wonder if it's you. I said to him look again. He did and he began to smile and said, I recognize you Mr. Sodi, you preached to colored folks once on board of the vessel on the North Sea, and with that he gave me his hand, I knew Rastas in my earlier years having business with his old master in the South, he was really ebony and very ignorant, but his face now shone with the brightness and radiance of heaven itself, and his garments were perfect and purest whiteness, well, I am glad to meet you, he said. Indeed it is mutual I replied, but you are so changed, 
Then I asked Trastis what about your former master, he said I fear he is not here. I've never met him since the day I escaped. I went to northern Russia thanks to the boat you know very well about. I could not take the whipping from him anymore. When the boat was full of cotton balls, I hid between the balls until I was off. Then I had to leave my hiding place because of hunger and thirst. Several times he threatened to throw me into the sea like Jonah. But my life was spared. And I was able to escape to Russia. I have never seen him in this celestial kingdom. I have passed to and fro among these countless hosts of the redeemed. I went in many sections of the city. But I have not seen him I fear he is not here. He used to attend the services of his church and made a good profession on Sunday, but during the week he was ungodly and rough to his children and worse to his slaves. I have come to realize the depth of the folly of those who serve the Lord one the seventh day of the week, while serving the devil the other six days. They strive to be good on Sunday, but they let the devil lead them the rest of the week. I was poor in the world. My cabin had no window, nor did we have rag of a carpet on the floor nor a picture on the wall, neither did we have a flower in the yard, nor did we have a yard, for cotton grew even by the door, but I have everything here, everything I see is mine, and everything belong to us here, I am free to go where I want, up and down the streets, through the long avenues, I can walk along the streets and on the long avenues, in one way or another, I can enter the gates of the city in the beautiful chariots of God, and I can go to countless or infinite regions of paradise. The Lord Jesus gave me the total freedom. He said to me, go wherever you want, go eat all the fruit of trees that you want, go climb the mountains and the valleys along rivers, let your soul bath in the Son of the Lamb, who is the light of all the heavenly city and this paradise. Well Rastus I said to him, I am very glad to meet you here and witness how God has lifted you up from the dust and the dunghill and made you a prince among his saints. Indeed, I am the object of his grace and you are the witness. But when did you arrive in the city? He asked me, I replied it is my first visit to paradise after having been in the city only a short time. I have only just begun to see my inheritance. He said well you will never get tired watching the great mysteries of the eternal city, your heart will overflow with the highest emotions of praise, but do you see my harp I keep it tuned up all the time ready to praise of the Lord Jesus. If only one day in one of these roads I could meet my old master, I believe that the angels would have to minister the first reproach in heaven saying to me, do not play so loud you will disturb the children meeting in the fourth avenue. But I fear I shall never meet him for God says that nothing shall ever enter into the city that is unclean, nor shall any man practicing abomination and falsehood, but only those whose names are written in the book of life of the Lamb. My master was raping women of the plantation, and he encouraged others to do the same, but on Sunday he concealed all this, and had the appearance of a holy man. I fear that his tears will be without hope and that he will never reach the throne or this eternal kingdom. Then I said tell me Rastus, what about other slaves? Are there many in, in this celestial kingdom? My dear Mr. Sodi. They are multitudes of them here and they sing in choirs with other people, and often their voices are stronger. Obviously not all of them are here, because many of them were as hypocritical as their masters. Some were violent and terrorized others. Others did not believe in God, others were liars, and God says that those who practice these will have their share in the lake of fire and suffering, if only I could go back to earth and see them again for the last time. I would take this golden harp, I would show them this garment of light, I would bring them a cluster of these fruits, they would believe me, though they believe neither Moses nor the prophets, Rastis. To see you have been a very interesting encounter for me, me too said Rastis. But I see that my company is scattering I have to go to, see you soon we'll meet again I'm sure. After saying goodbye to me, Rastus disappeared among the carriages and the thousands of redeemed who left the great gathering of martyrs, it was really a blessing. I said to my mother that there is no longer the slightest feeling of segregation in regard to anyone who has been judged by God to pass through the gates of the eternal kingdom. Yes, she said, we come from all nations, from all races from all languages, from all peoples. And all are in the image of their Lord, though P.O.P. have retained a peculiar resemblance to what they were before on earth.
But look! David is coming with his celestial car, a few moments later we boarded and we sitted with him in the chariot, and we were flying at great speed towards the gate of the Eternal City, we entered by the gate of Manasseh, and we parked the heavenly vehicle near the great University of Children. Listen now, to an amazing message from the special teaching ministry of Apostle David E. Taylor. In this teaching, you will learn the extraordinary love of God, highlighting the unique nature of Jehovah's love, distinct from Jesus. Drawing from personal experiences of encounters with Jesus and God the Father, he emphasizes the profound depth and transformative power of God's love. Apostle Taylor unveils the significance of understanding the distinctions within the Godhead, Jehovah being greater than Jesus, and advocates for believers to develop a deep, intimate relationship with God like Enoch did. He ties this discussion to the impending days of Noah, asserting that the world today mirrors that era, emphasizing the necessity for preparation and intimacy with God before the anticipated return of Jesus. Apostle Taylor underscores the importance of faith in pleasing God and presents Enoch as an example of someone who pleased God through faith, ultimately being translated without experiencing death. Listen now. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. So watch this. If you don't develop a life of faith, you can't even begin. It's impossible to please. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. But in this context, it says, if you ain't got no faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you're fooling yourself. So what do you need to do every day? You need to wake up in faith, believing. You need to wake up in faith with a positive attitude. You know what it says about faith in Hebrews. Faith is the substance. That means the thing you want, the substance of things hoped for, the things you're expecting God to do for you, the aspirations, the promises. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So watch this. People who walk by what they see can never please God. Write that down. Your eyes is your biggest enemy out of this intimacy. Your eyes. What are you talking about? The eyes. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The children of Israel made God so angry. He split the Red Sea before them, did all these miracles. And then when they saw an obstacle that was above their head, they had no calculation in their mind how to get past it. The first thing they do is look at how big the thing is. Instead of having faith in God, God gets mad at that kind of thing. The 10 spies, they came back with a negative report. They said, we saw giants in the land and we were like little grasshoppers. We can't go over there. They're going to kill us. And God says, as you spoke in my ears, I'm going to do it to you. I'm going to let you die. God gets upset. You experience his hot displeasure when you don't walk in faith. You know, there was a year I was struggling and really going after God, pursuing God. And I was having challenges, trying to change my character. And then there was a spirit of despondency and depression that tried to catch me because I felt like, you know, how am I overcome this? And that's when the Lord taught me. He said, there's never any reason to give up. Never any reason. And that's what happens when you feel despondent and depressed and overcome with something and God said to me, he says, a lot of, he says, you are like that because the church has taught you that if you are not perfect and are not doing everything right, that you're not pleasing me. He says, but it's your attitude while you're in the midst of being processed and growing and changing of unbelief or despondency or depression that doesn't please me. You see how the devil trick us? And of course, we know that God wants us to walk in his righteousness. But part of his righteousness is faith. It says therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Faith reveals God's righteousness. And so the church teaches us that you got to be perfect to please God. And God is just the opposite. God know you in process. 
God know you love him. God know you're pursuing him. God know you're trying to change. Do you see that? God understands where you are. What displeases him is when you lose faith in the process. Because without that faith, you ain't going to please him no way. So God wants you to wake up every day with praise on your lips. Praise, victory songs, knowing that God has made a way for you to escape. God has made a way through any trial, any trouble, any tribulation, any test, any temptation. He wants you to wake up with praise. He wants you to wake up giving him the glory, believing that you're going to overcome. The Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you got to understand the kind of faith Enoch had. He had the kind of faith that pleased God, which is the opposite of the scripture here. Without this faith, you can't even please him. Before I start talking to you about how he got translated because of a testimony that he pleased God, the foundation of, your, of you pleasing God is a positive attitude toward God, a positive expectation. Believing that you received it already. Shukupakai. Hallelujah. I just felt that one. Holy Ghost. Oh yeah. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. My old bishop used to say, faith is positive expectation. Bishop G. Patterson, surrounded by negative forces. Then doubt is the opposite. Doubt is negative expectation because you are surrounded by negative forces. In other words, I don't care what's surrounding your life. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what it looks like. God want to see, can you as his child keep a positive attitude that he's going to bring you out, that you're going to be victorious. Come on, that you're going to be triumphant. It says, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's already had the victory, but the devil wants you to think you're defeated. And then he wants you to know the scriptures and then still feel defeated. There are people who know they're not defeated, but they feel and it looks like it. And I'm telling you, your eyes will be the biggest hindrance to this kind of intimacy because you cannot please God if you walk by sight. Because in most times, the, the way things look is not the way they really are. The way things look it's the complete contradiction and opposite of what God said. And you got to believe in what God said through your ears instead of what you're seeing on the outside with your eyes. And that's a paradox for men because God said, man, look at the outward appearance. God, look at the heart. So that show you what man's weakness is. Man is always looking at the outward appearance. That's why the church is always attacking people, always attacking people who look wrong or they think they see something wrong they, they they go by their eyes that kind of stuff displeases god do you not know if you are the fact that you're a gossiper the fact that you see or hear something about somebody that's not from god and you could jump on the bandwagon with a bunch of detractors and attackers and persecutors you're not leaving living a life pleasing to god because you're walking by the flesh you're walking by the sight God want people to walk by what he hear. I love how it says about Abraham, his faith. It says he believed God in the midst of having a dead seed. Do you hear that? It says, Abraham considered not now his body, which was now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform it. So here is Abraham got a body that's dead. His wife's womb is barren. Can't bear no children. And God said, I'm going to give you a child. Totally contradictory. And if you notice, God is always speaking some positive, supernatural, something that is impossible that's going to happen in your life. 
while all the circumstances are saying different, then you got to understand where God lives. He don't live down here with a bunch of this negative junk. You got to you got to forsake that and you got to believe God. You got to believe God's word. You got to believe who he is. He's a positive person. He ain't negative. I've, I've never, ever seen God depressed. You got to wake up and understand that God has a plan for your life and it don't matter what is coming, hell or high water, it don't matter if the if the floods are trying to overflow you, you understand if attack is coming, I don't know why God is having me say this, but I'm saying it in the Holy Ghost, I don't care what is taking place in your life, when you have faith in God, you please him because He he's looking at your attitude to see, do my child, I want to look down from heaven and see do my child believe in me, do she or he have confidence in who I am. But let me get back to Enoch. Here it is. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. See that? The fact confirmation that verse 6 goes with verse 5 is because verse 5 ends with he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then 6 picks up with how to please God and how you can't please God which is talking about Enoch still. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, this is how Enoch was, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I used to think that scripture was just a part away from the scripture with Enoch. But as I studied Enoch's life, I found out that he was a diligent seeker. You say, what are you talking about? See, God has dealt with me on Hebrews 11 and 6 because I've been a diligent seeker for many years. I've been one that I just go into church even in my teenage years. I'll go and shut away for three days. I won't come out. I stay in there. When I pray, I don't pray no one hour. I stay in there eight hours, sometimes 14 hours. I mean, I love being in the presence of God and I wasn't just in there spending time. I was seeking who he was. And I didn't stop one year. I was consistent every year. You know how some saints, they seek God for a number of years, then they stop. <laughs> no, I was consistent for years. So he is a rewarder, and, and Enoch's reward was his translation. Reward means a boss, one who pays his wage, wages, or God will pay you spiritual blessings or benefits for seeking him. Not only finances, but spiritual blessings. And so because I've done this thing, like you see me in here shedding away the longest time in history in the Bible that's recorded. But as I went deeper to the ancient writings, there was another man that has that shed away with God longer than I did. He was the grandfather of Noah. We know Noah was shed in the ark for one year. God shut him in for one year. Because the Bible says when the, when the door closed of the ark, it says, and the Lord shut him in. It says that the Lord shut the door. So Noah was put on a supernatural shut in. Where he didn't come out of one space for one year to stay in that one location to seek God. You want to know why God does that? I've learned that shut in limits your eyes from seeing a bunch of different things and being distracted. Being in one place, seeing the same thing gets boring and your eyes just start to die. You want to know what shut in does? It crucifies the eyes of the flesh or the lust of the eyes. In other words, when you're looking at the same place, your eyes don't gravitate. They start dying. You can feel it. And now your ears open better. You want to know why I shut myself into God? Because I want my ears to open so I can hear him. Because faith comes by what? Hearing, not seeing. But a lot of you are distracted by your eyes. And I know these revelations and things by experience because I've been doing shut-ins for many years. I thought now that my shut-in for almost two years this time was the longest one. And it is according to everyone in the Bible except Enoch. And as I began to study his life through different books like in Jasper that is mentioned in the book of Chronicles, it mentions one of the lost books of the Bible is Jasper. And then it mentions Enoch, the writings of Enoch. And it's in the translation and ascension of Enoch. 
And this is what I found out. You got to hear this. It says one during this 300 years, he took a season where he separated himself from mankind for years. And it says, and he shut in his house. Now you got to understand there were no churches or temples back then. Solomon built the first temple, so they didn't have a church to go to. So their sanctuary was their house. Enoch shut away in his house. The ancient writer said he shut away from men, not for one year or two years. It was for years. It didn't say how many. I'm still trying to find it out. But he didn't come out for years. Maybe four or five years he stayed in his house. He didn't go nowhere. And he stayed in there seeking God. I was like, oh my God, I was blown away. I said, I've been doing this for years. But I said, I thought I've been doing the longest shut-ins. I said, he is. And it says, an angel came to him and told him, it is time for you to show your face to men now. It's time for you to come out of, this is what they said, come out of your secret place. Nobody had seen him. He would not make contact with nobody. He stayed in his house with his wife and with his children. And he sought God. He separated himself in his house seeking God. But he would not go out into the public. That's what you call a shut-in. I couldn't believe it because the way it said it, he shut in his house. He didn't come out. And everybody couldn't find him because they didn't know where he was. Or if they knew where he was, they know he wasn't coming out. And then the angel said, it's time to show your face to men. And so he comes out for a number of years and all the kings of the earth makes him an emperor, right? This is the kind of life he lived on earth. So he had the imperial anointing. I started to realize that when Jesus told me, too many heaven about the imperial anointing, I said, this is right down the same alley. This is why you're teaching me the imperial power, being an emperor. All the kings of the earth in his time came to him to teach them about the things of God because he had been shut away seeking God. He was a diligent seeker. He would not come out of his house until an angel would tell him. Wow. Phenomenal. And that's not it. So God had began to reveal to him that he was going to translate him and take him to heaven just like he revealed it to Elijah and so it says at the end of his days watch this he did a three day fast where he stayed away from men and then he went out to teach then he it says he tapered his life off away from people so it started with a three day fast and then he would come out and be with them and then he started only appearing once a week in the public once a week and then after once a week he started only appearing once a month do you understand that that means he would stay with God for one month and only preach one day how many preachers would do that how many preachers would make seeking God their life Seeking God like that. Diligently seeking. That's what you call diligent seeking. They want to preach 30 days and pray one day. In America, these preachers don't like to pray. A lot of them don't like seeking God. Especially not like this. They too busy. They won't shut down their ministry. Or they won't set it up to where they can get away. Like you see me doing for a whole year. Almost two years because I want something from God and I know being on the platform ministering for years and years and not coming in like this you cannot develop your own spiritual life you cannot gain nothing from God like that you got to be a diligent seeker and being a diligent seeker is not a preacher it says he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him not those who diligently preach for him preaching is service we are called to do that we have a destiny Yes, that's part of obedience to God. But when you put ministry or when you put your life or anything above spending time in God's presence, that's why Jesus said 
to Martha. Oh, Martha, Martha, you are, you are troubled about many things. She was saying, Lord, make Mary come and help me. And the Bible says Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing his words. And Martha got upset. He said, you are troubled about many things. He says, Mary, this thing that she had will never be taken from her. One thing is needful, which shall never be taken from her. And that's to sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus and hear his voice. That's what you do when you shut in. That's what you do when you separate your life to seek God. It's to hear his voice. It's to hear his words. Rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So here it is before his translation. He would not. I'm telling you the foundation of what I'm about to share with you of how he gained the kind of character he had to please God. Number one, he had to walk in faith. Number two, he had to be a diligent seeker. That's uncommon. And so when you read this, because there's no more information about who he was and what he did, you can't even understand what that means. But I'm giving it to you. He was a diligent seeker. He would not come out. He made seeking God a diligence in his life. That word diligent means a word, I mean a work. To work hard at. Do you know how hard it is to come in here and see God and shut down like this? You got to understand. It's a fight out here in the world that keeps and pulls you out of God's presence. It keeps you out of doing stuff like this. There are so many excuses. But Enoch was so diligent. He had a wife and children and he made time to do it in his house. There was no church like I'm in now. We got better promises because we got a church and a temple. I can seek God. I can get away from my house and come to God's house. And that's even another deeper revelation. I'm taking it further than Enoch took it. I'm not only staying in my house, I'm going to God's house. And there are even more benefits for shedding away and seeking God in his house and not in yours. I don't have time to take you there. We'll do that next week. It's a revelation there. But here it is. This is what he did. Three days he fasted. He started tapering his life away from mankind. Three days he fasted and would go back and be with the people. Then he started tapering off. Then he would only come out. He would pray for six days and only come out once a week. You see that? He wanted to be with God alone more than be out in public. Some of you, that is not your, your, that is not your desire. Or it may be of your vision, a desire. Pursuit is proof of desire. You can't say you desire something, you're not pursuing it or doing it. It's nothing but words. It says, this people draw not to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Remember this, when you really desire something, you pursue it. You are called to be God's elite warrior. Join God's mission to bring healing, deliverance, and salvation to America at David E. Taylor's Arena Miracle Crusade. Starting in Orlando, Florida, this life-transforming crusade will be arriving in arenas around the country, but only your partnership will help make this possible. Become the elite warrior God called you to be and help God bring the kingdom back in the 21st century. Be one of the first 5,000 elite warriors who sow just $240 a month for 12 months and get your name on the wall of fame honoring those who support God's mission. David E. Taylor will also personally pray a prayer of increase and blessing over you each and every month. You'll also get huge savings on empowering resources, free dream interpretation, access to special events with priority seating, exclusive updates, and so much more. Your generous love gift also helps demonstrate the love and grace of God by bringing food, clean water, and life-changing provisions to precious families in need through our worldwide outreach ministries. The sick healed, lives changed, Soul saved. It's time to do your part and join this crusade as an elite warrior of God. Call our 24-7 Miracle Prayer Line at 1-877-843-4567 and become an elite warrior and receive all these exclusive benefits while helping to fulfill God's mission of healing and salvation across America. Answer the call and become an elite warrior today. 
the mystery series, Ancient Writings from God's Holy Word. I am so excited because the Lord has told me to give you what he has given me since I've been in here in Shadaway now for over three years. The mysteries of his ancient word, the Holy Bible. You're going to learn with books like Jasher that is mentioned in Joshua, the book of the seer Nathan, the book of Enoch in the Bible mentions this. Learn about Joseph's life, imprisonment, the details of his divine romantic engagement and marriage to his wife Asenath, Enoch's actual translation and ascension to heaven and what happened to him after he got there. Hear also the astounding account of the 200 angels that fell, known as the Watchers, who married natural women on earth and had intercourse with the daughters of men. This is what released the Nephilim or giants on the earth. And the most thrilling thing of all is the ancient mysteries about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Learn mysteries on so many other men and women whose lives are recorded in the Bible. To register free, call 1877 the Glory.